Steve Harvey is my favorite man, okay? Because he gives the greatest advice I've ever heard. It's the least qualified advice. And I'm pretty sure he has every damn television station held hostage or maybe has some dirt on them because he's allowed to be on every channel at every given moment. He's on Family Feud. He's on that show where he talks to the kids. He's on like 10 other shows. Pretty sure he did. He hosted Miss America pageant and uh, he actually read the wrong name out, which was hilarious. He also said that if you don't believe in Jesus, you're an idiot and you have no moral barometer and he's definitely cheated on his wife. He also has a hot daughter. I know, man, the guy with the mustache that looks like it was painted on looks he's got a hot daughter. Who would have guessed? But my question today, what happens when you combine Judge Judy with the charm of Steve Harvey? That's right. You get Steve Harvey judging Judy. Nope, no, no, no. You get Judge Steve Harvey. It's a show created by some person who is clearly in on a joke somewhere and probably lost a bet. And they said, how about we take all of the Judge Judaisms that we have on daytime television and put Steve Harvey in a robe and have him say player a lot and then bang a gavel that he's not accustomed to banging. This is one of the weirdest TV shows I've ever seen in my life. And I gotta say, I love it. I love it. Anything Steve Harvey does, pretty funny to me. Can't believe I'm gonna say this, but I picked some of the best episodes and I wanted to watch it with you guys. But before I do, there's one thing I gotta, you know. <laughs> Okay, now we're ready for Steve Harvey. Woo! By the way, I don't know if you guys knew this. Judge Judy's the actual judge. It's not like she just came on television, had a gavel in her hand. She's like, you, $600. She actually is a qualified judge. Steve Harvey's not a qualified anything. In fact, at the start of his show, he said, see, I ain't no judge. See, I ain't got a law degree, and I'm way too fly to wear a robe. I'm too fly for a robe, which sounds kind of cute until you realize, oh, this dude is giving the least qualified advice of all time. It's like if Judge Judy decided to be on Top Gear and was like, what you need to do is uh, jack that car up and put uh, put some um, put some Nissan parts in into the front of the car boot. OK, and that's my verdict. It would be too much. The fact is, Steve Harvey doesn't have any qualifications, so none of his actual advice at the end of the cases can be used in a court of law. This is basically just a dude who smiles a lot with the whitest teeth known to man, telling you what you should do and then banging a fake gavel, which is equivalent to a squeaky toy. And they somehow made this into a show because America was like, we don't have enough to watch. I would take a look at it, look a little bit like uh, Black Eddie Burback. Brown? Okay, sorry. <laughs> and it's a big world out there, and it's filled with people that just don't see eye to eye. See, that's why I come in. See, I ain't got a law degree. There we go, within eight seconds. See, I ain't got no law degree. It's like he had to say that, because if he didn't say that, then people would go out there being like, Steve, you need to help me solve my legal case against Nike. I have a battle against them, and I need Steve Harvey to help be the judge on that case. He had to say it. It was for disclosure. This man literally had to say, I ain't no judge. I'm just a guy with a gavel. I ain't no fireman. I'm just a guy with a, with a hose pipe. Y'all y'all, y'all keep got to keep stop asking me if I can put out your fires. This is a fake hose pipe. Court. Is now in session. <laughs> All rise for the Honorable Judge Steve! I did not think that guy would be black. I was expecting a white man. <laughs> <laughs> All rise for Steve Harvey. I did not expect it to be a shortish black man. That is that threw me off guard already. Wow, Steve Harvey is diverting my expectations, and we barely started the show. In fact, the opening credits have not finished. Wow, good work, Steve. Okay, so he's a fly judge. He's dressed in black. He's in a suit. He doesn't have that hairpiece. I would have paid good money to see Steve Harvey in that like toupee thing that they used to wear back in the old day courts. Oh man, wouldn't that be funny? But uh, Steve Harvey's now court is in session. His right hand woman, the uh, bailiff, she does. She looks like she hates him and likes him at the same time. And Steve Harvey is now ready to proceed. This court is a mix between Judge Judy, Jeremy Kyle, Jerry Springer, and possibly Dr. Full all at once. And we know this. Uh, Steve Harvey is the alternate Dr. Full in a black timeline, and Dr. Full is the white Steve Harvey. This is just, this is common information. Well, welcome everybody. This is the case of Bernice Thompson versus Joanne Gamble. Bernice is suing her friend Joanne for $8,500 worth of loans. Damn, I love I love these lit-ass courts. When courts are like, oh, shit. Don't you love that? Don't you wish certain sports were like that? Like if golf, like say Tiger Woods hit the ball and someone's like, god damn, motherfucker. 
Every time he hit the ball, I would watch, I'd watch golf so much more. Every time he hits it in the hole, he's like, Woo! Holy shit! I'ma smoke some more. Woo! That's some good shit, Tiger. Good shit, Tiger. I'd love it. I mean, it's the same thing in tennis. They like shush the crowd whenever they serve. They need the crowd to like be pumped up like WWE. They need someone to be like, Ho! Oh, what a serve by Roger Federer. He just served that guy into the next realm. This guy's a... This guy's a fucking waiter the way he serves. That's what they need. Then I would watch those sports way more. Joanne claims the money was a gift. Uh, let's start with you, uh, Bernice. You have 30 seconds to state your case. I'm here today to sue Joanne Gamble for it. Oh my God, and they got black Mick Jagger. It's a, it's a black female Mick Jagger. Don't, I can't unsee it now that I can... Whew, I can't unsee it. That's Mick Jagger. That's black Mick Jagger. Oh my goodness. They managed to get them. They caught the Rolling Stones, baby. For $8,500 that I loaned her in good faith, and she seems to think that she don't owe me, but I need my money. Miss Joanne, it's your turn now. She didn't loan me the money. She gave me the money, just like she gave me presents. Oh. How did you all meet? How do you all even know each other? Okay, we grew up in the same neighborhood. Uh-huh. So then, in 16, I happened to start dating one of her relatives. In 2016? Oh, yes. That five years ago, you... I'd rather have triplets today than to be bothered with him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So this is one of them courts. This is a court where, you know, people can speak. It's not like a, my plaintiff would like to uh, say this. You a trick ass hoe! It's more like that sort of court. It, that's why I said it's sort of like uh, Jerry Springer in which they talk freely. And Steve Harvey, if there's one thing I think universally everyone can agree on, he has the best facial expressions in the game. This man should be in pornos. And I'm not saying acting as the person, I'm saying he should be the person delivering the pizza or the person at the start of the scene, like, no tip for me, I guess, and then just leave. I mean, that is a very, very cool reaction by Judge Steve Harvey. I am already believing that Steve Harvey is more like a fish out of water. There are many places I don't want to see Steve Harvey, the moon, because he might be like, yo, play there's no gravity out here. Or maybe I wouldn't like to see him in the studio because I don't know what he'd come up with. I don't know if I want to hear a rap song by Steve Harvey. And um, also in my dreams, this man mustache scares me. I'm not sure how it sits the way it sits. And I'm even scared of, to, you know, possibly think of what he looked like without a mustache. I feel like he was born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe he was born with a mustache. <laughs> Bernice, exactly how much does she owe you right now you're claiming? The balance is $8,500. God damn. Miss Joanne, you feel like you don't have a balance owed? Not like that, Your Honor. And let me go back and stipulate Not this. Not like that? Not like that. No, oh, okay. I did pay her. I like how he just repeats things that he... Not like that? Oh, okay. Okay, You. that's exactly what you said. Verbatim, even. Oh, okay. What you say? No, I'm sorry. I just like talking sometimes. I like hearing my voice. That's why I'm on every television show in the world. <laughs> but as long as she was in a relationship with a relative of mine, there was no question about me giving, paying, or anything because she continued to give me, give, not loan anything. This 8500 to you was not a loan. It was a gift. Oh, I'm sorry. So the, <laughs> in case you haven't been watching, Mick Jagger over here loaned her friend 850 oh, sorry, $8,500. Overshot that one. And the friend is like, nah, you gave it to me as a gift. That is the case that we're having. I'm much less worried about the case, more worried about Judge Steve Harvey and how he might be drifting off into the nether realm every time these two talk because he's worried about what show he could do next. But we're here and we're listening to these two speak. Gil. Yes, sir. Like just, like, like just like, you know, it's just Christmas all year long. <laughs> she, she can keep the gifts, but I want my money. It really zoomed in on that white guy. <laughs> what was that zoom for? This guy was like... <laughs> Someone was like, we need that, we need that, that's the expression that we need. That's the real thing, that's the real expression we need. What a dude, man. Who is that guy? He looks evil. Yes, I was going with a relative of hers, but he was a skirt chaser, and that's why I wear pants today, because I don't fool him. <laughs> God damn. Woo! Come on, Steve. That was a good one. She said, she said, oh, that was, a, I got, I'm going to have to use that, even, even though that doesn't apply to me. Damn, she was a skirt chaser. That's why I wear pants. Woo! This is a, this is not court. This is a sermon right now. So now this loan, how did it start? The first time I volunteered to pay her rent for her, I volunteered. She didn't ask. So how much was that? Fourteen hundred. God, you a good friend, man. Damn. 
I need friends like this. This is my friend probably take fourteen hundred before he loan it. Damn. Fourteen hundred. Yes. And you volunteered. I volunteered no, and, and then she paid. You gave it to her. No, I loaned it to her and she paid it back. You just said you gave it to me. Girl, I gave it to you without you asking. Don't be crazy. And you're right. I Steve. Hey, Steve. You might wanna. Break it up. This is what the gavel's for. Order in the court type beat. Hey, well, uh, is that a Big Mac? Uh, order in the court, please. Because you continue to give me, give me, me, give me. Okay, Steve, your bailiff is now uh, trying to communicate, but you are the one who has got the gavel and, you know, Judge Judy at this point would be screaming at people like they're on detention or timeout. Steve, maybe, maybe do something, Steve. Okay, the next money was exchanged. She paid me back. And then on 212 or 19, she uh, paid back 1400 for rent. Okay, and then so I loaned her hold $500 on. for car okay. and $300 for her utility. Okay, hold on one sec. Steve is busy doodling shit. He's like, okay, okay, one sec. Let me just finish this. That's my, that's me with a mustache. You like that? You like that? All right, now, what, what do you say about, uh, what, what's this case about? It's just every time I see Steve Harvey, I know that he's not listening. I know this man is thinking back to the days of when he announced the wrong person. Uh, with the Miss America pageant or Miss World pageant. Uh, he fully messed that up and he's like, it's all me. I got it wrong. It's my bad. And then he continued to live a great career and forget about it. But I think it's catching up to him. He's got time now that he has this show. But really, does he have time? Because every time I see him, he's doing something. I think he has a radio show as well. No, I gave 16000 but she's paid some back. Oh, 16000 no, you believe that? 16000 well, and I she gave me that. I, that's believable. That's a huge sum for some people. Ma'am. I mean, it's a huge sum for all people, man. I mean, ma'am. Come on. Jeez, just because she's Mick Jagger doesn't mean she's got like hella money, man. What kind of friendship is this? I need friends who can loan me $16,000. Can you be a friend? Not only can you subscribe, but could you lend me $16,000? I am 16, Leo, and I need that money really badly. I promise. I promise I won't pay you back. Please. I have a ledger here. So now, let, let this ledger that you have, you've kept track of all of this stuff. Every bit of it. And yeah, she so even signed it. I like how Steve Harvey, he's really, he's like a layman sort of judge. This ledger over here. So it keeps track of all the things that you say that it keeps track of. And what's that over there? It's a diary. You write things down for your day so it gets a little better or worse. And you got feelings in it. Give me that. Give me that. And what's that about that? What's that? Turkey sandwich? What is food for sustenance that you have to eat to provide your body with nutrients so you can carry on with the day? Give me that. Just, I need something like that. I got some food in my mustache from 1638. And I'm not talking about the time, the year. Oh, we're going to find out. She signed it. Now, let me say something about a ledger. Is this all three pages? Yes, sir. Okay. Started is this three pages of the ledger or just two of them? I counted three, but I'm asking you because I'd like to be sure. I don't know. Is it three? Yes, yes, Steve. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna believe you. But if you lying, oh, if you lying, I'm gonna boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna arrest you. And you've kept track of it. Every time I loan her some money, every time she I, paid me I, back. Matter of fact, I see the first date on here: 12, 10, 18. Yes, sir. People who have ledgers in the hood have ledgers for three reasons. Oh shit, Steve, why would you say this? Okay, let's prepare for this comment. <clears throat> I know Miss Bernice is not a drug dealer, so- Right, there's the first one. There, there it is. Steve Harvey said it, not me. Steve Harvey's like, look at these two hood rats. Steve Harvey, they're just two people, man. I don't know why you assume they're from the hood, but all right. So those people have ledgers. The only other people that have ledgers are people who run the numbers in the hood. Right, so bosses. <laughs> and the third reason people have ledgers in the hood is from the loan sharking business. Yes. That's about right. What, what did you used to do for a living, Miss Bernice? First, I worked in the mill, and then I changed... Uh, careers and I was a social worker. So now this is not where you learned about ledgers from. No, I no, Steve. She's not a drug dealer or a drug boss or fucking loan shark, Steve. Do you think she'd be on public television? Man, this bitch took my drugs. Well, I'm sorry, what? She took my crack, my heroin. She took my meth. I was watching Breaking Bad. I made some blue blue meth. She took it. Steve, I need a back, Steve Mo. Do you think she's really gonna be on public television doing that, Steve? Really? Steve, you gotta smarten up, brother. I'm from ledgers in school. I graduated with a bachelor's in criminal justice. This is just, it looks so bad when Steve's like, you must have learned that from the hood. And she's like, I learned ledgers from school, you know? Like like many things <laughs> that, a, that a black person like myself could go to because just like everyone else in the world, I don't have to be profiled into being from the hood. <laughs> You know, you know what I'm talking about, Steve? That mustache is hiding a lot of your IQ points. Justice and a minor in psychology. But that's 
Damn. Ooh. Hey. I like it. I like it. I like it. She, I like it. I like this person, man. Minor in psychology. What you need a course in. Officer, with a degree in criminal justice, been doing that almost 30 years, got my own company, can make money, and don't mind loaning money to some folks or even giving it to people. We got two intelligent women. Yeah, and that you call from the hood for some reason. One. That are highly degreed. No. Oh! This is going to turn into a WWE match. This is going to turn into a WWE match. Because someone's fighting someone over here. And I I, ain't, I don't know what's going to happen. But we're going to have some fighting. <laughs> so you must be pointing to myself because... What kind of a judge is this, Steve? I have money and you still owe me. Okay. I have money and I don't owe you. Okay, well... Yes, well, whatever. we're about to find out because we have a written agreement. And, and another written agreement is that nobody has noticed that my mustache has changed because <laughs> let's just pretend that that didn't happen. All right. Balance is owed. On 12-4-18, $1,400. paid back to 1400 Does this man need a mic or is it just him screaming loud enough? I mean, I feel like he does not need air to be mic'd up in any way, shape, or form. I think he could use the mic off Tyson at, you know, something like that. Because he really does not need a mic. The way he's speaking, I can hear him from other countries. This is how he manages to get on everyone's TV in America. He just screams. April 8th, I got April 22nd, July 10th, September. Paid back. Now, you keep paying back now. $2,000. Then September 21, 2020. $4,000 for rent? What What you renting? Studio? God damn. That's a lot of money for rent. How is your friend keep paying? What does she do? Does she earn so much that she could pay for me and you? Damn, that is. I need to start walking in the steel mall. Back $500. So there's a balance left for $5,500. And now we at the last page. Of November 18th of 2020, uh -huh. Joanne, Joanne borrowed, borrowed another $3,000. She had, had to move, move and the new total is $8,500. Do you think when Steve Ahavi orally pleasures his wife, it tickles? Signed November 18th, 2020. Bye. Uh-oh. Does she like the bushes? I got two signatures. Oh, we reached a break, finally. <laughs> But seriously, that question has been on my mind since the start of this episode, and I did not want to say it, but, uh, you know, fuck it. If you watched up to this point, then you're probably going to stick around, so I would like to know how she feels about the uh, the mustache. Does she like the way it rubs? <sighs> okay, maybe she has a bush and they're both doing a forest adventure on Amazon. Okay, bye. Can't believe I just said that. Love you, mama. We have a written agreement, and now we're at the last page of November 18th of 2020, Joanne borrowed another $3,000 this is why the show is 40 minutes. This is why. Because Steve Harvey talks like that. At that pace as well. She borrowed another $4,000. Then, well, let me turn over the page. She borrowed more money from you. And then, it's like too slow. Him and Dr. Full stretch out the runtime of a show because they can talk so slowly. It's that sudden draw. Both of them are from the South. One of them is from the dirtier South. Man, do they talk slowly. Signed November 18, 2020. Bye. Uh-oh. I got two signatures. I got loner Bernice Thompson and I got borrower Joanne Gamble. I guess my yes. geritol kicked go, in. Show that to me. Okay, well, listen. I hate to be an actual law person here in the situation, but you can't verify that person signed that. That's just a piece of paper. That's not necessarily a technical ledger. That might be an agreement, but unless both parties agree that that is them who signed it, that don't mean nothing. I could write down, <laughs> Steve Harvey owes me $80 million, sign me, and then sign your name at the bottom, and you're like, oh shit, I guess I have to now. That's not true. We know that. That's extortion on the highest degree. Come on, Steve. You should know. Oh. So that, but the dementia still stands. So, but dementia, hold on, dementia hold on, still hold stands. On, let's just, is that your signal? <gasps> yes. Oh. What the f- <laughs> What was that? <laughs> yeah, we all surprised. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, well, I guess she admitted it, which is kind of like defeats the purpose of last couple of things I said. I'm sorry, you're really gambling your life away. <laughs> now, let me ask you this question right here, because you paid a lot of money back. So how do you pay half, but you don't owe the other half? 
Nah, here, Steve, it usually works like this. Some people can't fully pay it off. That's just because you have half the money, it doesn't mean you have whole the money. Right, Steve? You know you know how houses work when you pay a little deposit? Steve's like, how, if you could pay 10%, why you can't pay the other 90%? Because, because finance, Steve. That's st okay, Steve. All right. If each uh, if each hair on Steve's head was a brain follicle, then he would have the correct amount right now. And I'm giving back some of the money that she gave me. Gave gave me. See, loaner. Yeah. No. No. Listen. No. no loan. Yes. No. Yes. No. See, th listen to me. Don't don't fight this. Oh shit! Steve is doing something that judges ain't supposed to do. He's not getting out of his chair. Oh shit! I never seen a judge do this before. Have you ever seen a judge? Have you ever seen Judy be like? What the fuck did you just say to me? I'm about to lose my fucking marbles. Did you ever see that? Steve Harvey's gonna do some Steve Harvey justice. Don't, don't fight this. Shit. Here comes the judge. She seemed like a real nice lady. Oh, so this ain't how they do it in regular court, but this... No, they don't, Steve. <laughs> they don't do it in regular court like this at all, buddy. I don't know what kind of court you're running here. This is like a jester court. This is a new thing. I appreciate Listen you. To me. We got loner, that's Miss Bernice. Her. And we got bar borrower. <laughs> we got bar borrower. Another thing that a judge usually doesn't do in court, usually laugh. That usually doesn't happen, but uh, Steve Harvey is quite the jovial man, so he might be a judge, but, but the only thing he doesn't judge is the humor in which you bring to his court. In fact, you probably win the case if that happens. And work with my nephew on the police department. Nobody asked you that. And you work well, with I my nephew on the police department, which ain't got a damn thing to do with this case. <laughs> but so, we just throwing out random information so right you now. Think you're I got God damn, this is, this is, this is less of court and more of, <sighs> we're gonna go to court after this court battle because someone is gonna probably get a shoe or a pump thrown at them. Whew. I'm telling you, Steve, this is a WWE title match all by itself. Bernice Voss, uh, the gamble lady, I forgot her name. God damn. This is why you need like a mobile gavel. So you could just have any desk near you and be like, <laughs> I said order in the court, order in the court, please, please. I'm gonna call the police on you. That's Should've my name. Cut a now you a police officer, Miss Bernice, please. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying. Okay, Mr. Hightower, I mean, Judge Harvey. <laughs> I don't, I don't really get the reference. I'm sorry, uh, let me just look that one up. I'm sorry, Steve Harvey had a show called Mr. Hightow. Steve Hightow, former 1970s R&B singer who once opened for acts such as Gladys Knight and the Pups, can't seem to find ideal employment. What is this shit? What? The Steve Harvey Show. Mr. Hightower's opus. God damn, how long has Steve been on the air? God, he used to have hair. Man, I gotta watch this. You guys wanna see me, like, do a video on Steve Harvey Show? I didn't even know he had this show. And he had his smile back then oh my god you gotta you gotta bring up a picture of this this man had a high top fade and the mustache that he's regularly rocking and he still had that million dollar smile he actually looked really nice i mean he's a nice looking guy still i did not know that this man had been on the head that long god damn we all know who i really am <laughs> i ain't really no damn judge either <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, when your judge says he ain't no real damn judge and starts banging on your table to the to the point that you actually like, hey, excuse me, are you a referee counting to three? What, what are you doing in my table, man? At that point, you gotta be like, mm, I'm losing this case. And even if I'm winning this case, mm, I'm losing this case. It's like getting like a homeless man to judge a race and be like, you're the faster man. I don't know if this will hold up in the Guinness World Record. I don't know if... Tokyo is really going to put that in the record books. Fastest man in the world, Gerald from Whole Foods. I don't... <laughs> you know, this is, this is cute right here. <laughs> now... By the way, I watched the whole season for you guys to find two episodes I liked. I took the whole season, and I, honestly speaking, he, he says that he's not a judge in almost every episode. He reminds the crowd. He's like, I ain't no judge. <laughs> this ain't really a cult show. It's like just... Almost every other day, he's like a dude who has low self-esteem, who has imposter syndrome running Judge Judy show while she's away. It's crazy. It's like him going on the Ellen show, hosting and being like, I ain't really no lesbian. All right, that's fine. I, <laughs> but this is your show. We still gonna be friends as soon as you tell her to pay me my money. We gonna be better friends. Now, I'm telling you, the thing between her and that other person has messed us up. So let's straighten this out the so she can go messed up. Damn, Mick Jagger really going for it today. 
So you're saying that the, when she broke up with this relic, this is the only reason she wants this money. Bingo. That's Had what they you... still been together, it would not have been an issue. Well, maybe the relatives suck ass. Or maybe he doesn't suck ass, which is the problem. And oh, then, the hell it turn around. Been. I want my money. I'm not slow. I'm That's not stupid. That's okay. You might want it. Money not talks to and BS walks. Anyhow. Woo! I'm in the hospital, Judge. What? I'm sorry, what'd you say? So she drove me there, but in the interim of the month I was in the hospital, she used my car. The problem was she wasn't paying the toll. Are you claiming she ran up tolls on your car? Yes. Okay, well, let me see that. Well, we didn't know that. This is your bill from tolls that was ran up. Toll charges. God damn, where was this lady going to China? Why is it $627 in toll? Why she has toll fees? Where she how many toll booths do you have to pass to rack up $630 in toll charges, man? Blood pressure get up and couldn't get it down. Nah. Get your blood pressure down. <laughs> Ladies, uh, listen to me. I've really heard enough. Did you? I, I don't really think you actually helped anybody get anywhere in the situation, Steve. I feel like you just listened to them scream that you weren't a judge banged on someone's table and now you said you heard enough. I don't think that anybody's... I don't even know what's happened. Why was she in the hospital? Did it have anything to do with this lady? Why are we talking about toll bulls? Why is she using another person's card to pay toll bulls to come visit her? Steve, can you get to the bottom of this? You're like a bad episode of Scooby-Doo where it ends halfway through and Shaggy and Scooby are just smoking weed like, Scoob, oh, holy shit, this is some good weed. That's it. And I'm about to give you my verdict. Please do. Oh shit, this is the type of court where you say that you're gonna give a verdict and people are like, I'm happy about that. I don't know what the verdict's gonna be, but I'm happy this motherfucker made up his mind. Yeah, woo! The thing is, you're a former police officer. You know what evidence is. This is what's called incriminating evidence. Okay, so Steve thinks that because she has a ledger, plain and simple, he already got the evidence, but he still managed to drag this shit out. Steve, if you made up your mind at that point, you need to bang the gavel, my guy. We got some more people. There's a lot more people in America who need your help than these two. What are you doing still listening if you already made up your mind ages ago? Uh, any lawyer, a public defender get his hands on this. <laughs> you got a shot of going home. Having kept this ledger was about as OG... Mm. Old grandma as you could get. Damn, I mean, there's no need to call her old grandma. That's Mick Jack that's one of the greatest singers of all time in the Rolling Stones. What are you talking about? You know what's finna happen. Yes, I do. Now let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. When this is all over, you really want this woman out your life? No, I love her. She has really been a, a, a rock for me. Ah, now this is the thing with Steve Harvey's show. It's a little bit of love at the end of every show because everyone who comes on is not actually hating each other. Unlike Judge Judy where people leave being even more frustrated than when they come in, this is Steve Harvey's show. Everyone leaves with a hug. You might not get your money, but you're going to get hugged. <laughs> and I realize how that sounds now that I say it, but, <laughs> but come here, Steve Harvey going to hug you with his mustache. She a little hard now, but we all got one of these in our family. Uh -huh. <laughs> is she, she a tough love sister. But the key word is love. Yeah. Now the key word is sister. <laughs> love is the key word in that one. She don't love you, <laughs> but she is your sister, okay? I'm giving you $627.45 in toll money. When you take that from the $8,500, that's how I reach my final verdict. That's my final verdict. Yeah, so Steve Harvey got like a, he got a tagline at the end. He does this. That's my verdict, and that's the way I see it. But the thing is, he doesn't see it like that. Because if you watch the end credits of the show and pause it, it actually says Steve Harvey in no way is a judge or can influence people to do any of this shit. So this actually doesn't mean anything. And I hate to ruin the illusion, but Steve Harvey's paying all this money himself. The reason they got these people on is for entertainment value. That's why they have people who are so, like, animated. Because if they just got people like Steve, he took my money, and, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna kill him if he doesn't give it to me back, then we'd have a, then we'd have a different show all together. But yeah, once Steve bangs that gavel that looks almost like a toy for the Toys R Us, nothing actually gets solved, even though that, you know, he wants you to think that. So I'm sorry to ruin the illusion, but that's Steve Harvey won for you. This is the case of Mui Alba versus Melanie Starrett. 
Mui says her neighbor Melanie owes her $2,837.15 for a damaged fence and for half the liquor for a St. Patrick's Day party. Let's start. Okay, so the next case we got is about a damaged fence. Steve Harvey's really taking on the big cases, the ones that Judge Judy isn't taking on. Oh, uh, he cheated on me and he took away all my uh, kids. And then, uh, you know, he also taking the alimony checks. Judge Judy. Uh, my fence is broken and she owes me $32 for liquor. Steve Harvey. Another thing that Steve Harvey did, and this is true, you can look it up if you watch the series. Someone sued their wife for not coming to bed on time. Steve Harvey took on that case. So we are really dealing with the top of the top here. Start with you, Mui. Uh, you've got 30 seconds to state your case. Come on, Moo Cow. Tell me about what you want to do, Moo. Come on, Moo. Baby Blue Moo. Tell me. Tell me what it is. What, what's the case about? Hello, Judge Harvey. Melanie. Is Don't call him that, please. Don't let it go to his head. Your turn. You got 30 seconds to respond. My neighbor and former friend, Mui Alba, is suing me for half of the cost of her party she threw. Why is she talking like a robot? My neighbor and former friend, Moo Harbor, is just a bitch, and I don't want to be in her life anymore, Steve. She calls him Steve, by the way. It's my favorite thing. I love, I love it. I don't know what it is, but Steve Harvey? Ugh. She might as well call him Steve Hobby. That would have been my favorite. Just done to repair her dilemma dilapidated fence that branches damaged during a storm. Are uh, you both decided that you are former friends? We're not mending fences. <laughs> I like that. That's hot. Yeah, whenever you have the judge point at you and go, ha ha, that's you. You probably won that case. Ha <laughs> ha. Good one. Yeah, all right, judge. <laughs> that's what that's what you need. A judge to just be the most unbiased judge of all time. Ha. <laughs> nice. <laughs> What happened? Let's just get into what happened. 2017, a tree branch came and fell I'm on sorry. the back fences. It was, it was some some small limbs. Um, well, sir, see, wait I a minute. I'm sorry, what? Small limbs off a tree. Y'all call them, they call them branches, but all right. First of all, just listen. I'm going to give everybody a chance to tell their story. Yes, Trust Honor. me, because I want to hear this right here. <laughs> First, I'm very confused why we're in here by the tree branch from 2017 I anyway. Know, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm as confused as why you took this case about a tree branch. Not really sure that this is a case for primetime television, Steve. I'm sorry, Steve. But right now, I'm... I want to end this right now. Okay, you can't do that. This is not a. This is not an actual toy. This is not. An, this is like a police officer pulling out the gat and just going. No, no, I'm, I'm kidding, G. I'm kidding, man. I'm, oh, oh, come on, just take out the taser and start like. Who wants some? Who wants some? Steve, put the gavel down, man. A branch from her oak tree fell. Oh, he's writing it down. To my side, right there. There's the dilapidated. And he put it down, and he also turned the paper over, so he's not even gonna read it. If you sl if you look at that slowly, he writes it, then he turns the paper over as if it's a test, and he wants to look at his results afterwards. I think the Asian's gonna win. I was right. Hold on, it's not your turn yet. Yeah, I do apologize. We're we gonna have this problem. No, sir. I know how to handle this situation if cussing is allowed, but right. I, I really don't know how to keep saying. Please be quiet. Thank you, sir. <laughs> right, no, this is this is the this is the makings of a great judge. I, I, hey, man, if I could cuss you out, I'd say, "What the fuck is wrong with you, bitch?" But I, but since I can, I'm gonna say, "Please be quiet." I'm Steve Harvey. I don't take no sh stuff from anybody. The fence that's leaning is leaning more it's into leaning your yard. To my yard. Right. So why would you have a rope? <laughs> okay. Tied so. That's to help it lean more into your yard. Why? Why? I, I, oh, whoa, whoa. Why is your husband a wizard? What the hell? Are we just gonna ignore the fact that her husband is a literal fucking wizard? He's just sitting there being a wizard? Okay, we got Gandalf in the court. Anyway, <laughs> it looks like I can tell. No, it's not. If you don't be quiet. <laughs> That's what he wrote at the bottom of the paper. That's what he wrote. That's what he wrote. He wrote, what the fuck? This is Judge Steve Harvey. Bitch, please. Suck on, suck on, my, suck on my balls. All right. And she's like, I don't have any money right now. I was like, okay, clean it up and pay me when you can. Okay, now, hi. Hi. How you doing today? Hi, Your Honor. I'm doing wonderful. Guess what? This your turn. Steve is in a jovial mood as usual. Guess what? It's your turn now. Now you can talk. I, I just told you what the fuck, and I t told you I'm gonna cuss you out, but it's your time. I wasn't even at home when it happened, but on my way home into the neighborhood, there was debris all over the roads. Life. There was tree branches and stuff all over the road. It was obviously a storm all over the entire neighborhood. Where, where, where do you guys live in? Storm City? Where, what is this? Why there so many tornadoes in your house, man? Why do you guys live in a tornado perpetually? You like, you like 
Curry's the cowardly dog's grandparents. You guys live constantly on a place of peril. The top half of the leaves are in her yard. Mm -hmm. Indeed, very green. Because it just happened in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you remember what day this was? Move. Okay, I am now concerned at the fact that Steve Harvey over here has a pen in one hand and also a red marker in the other hand. I do not know when on earth he got the marker. I don't know why he uses it because he never does. But I'm very concerned at Steve's ever-growing multiplying collection of pens and pencils and other stationary assortment of equipment. This man is a menace to the stationary stores. But he also is asking about the case. And honestly, I forgot about it. There's his two neighbors, one neighbor's fence got blown up by a tree or something like that. Now he's just asking a classic question, what day did it happen? And of course the lady says this. It was in the morning. That's just perfect. Just fantastic, man. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Judge. I think it was August the 6th. Was August the 6th. 2017. Would that sound close to you? It was 2017, Steve. Well, we <laughs> there it is. It was 2017, Steve. If you if you replay it, she literally says Steve. She doesn't even try to say the V. It was 2017, Steve. Does she think his name is Steve Hobby? I was 2017, Steve. She called him Steve. Look at the way her mouth moves when she's Steve. 2017, Steve. Sorry, Steve. That's the coolest shit I've ever. Heard. I just want to mispronounce celebrities' names slightly from now on. Aaron Paul would be mm, probably Aaron Ploop. That's too much, isn't it? Jeff Goldblum could be Jeff Goldbluff. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, Chris Hemsworth could be Chris Hemsworth. And of course, Will Smith is Will Smith. But no, no, I went no, no, to the no. store. You didn't know and what I a two by four was? Okay. I, and no. I went to the store and I asked for a two by four. And the man brought no, me no, one, no. a big piece of wood out. And I said, okay. And did I paid for it. Did she bring you a two by four? She did. Okay. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> she didn't know what a two by four was. <laughs> can I get a two by four of what? I don't know. Two by four. You can get a four by four. Alright, she comes back with a car. Is this what you wanted? Damn, this lady. How you not know what a 2x4 is and you lived possibly 30 plus years in life? That's crazy. <laughs> okay. So she brought it over and told oh, my husband. Oh, this another picture. Yes, sir. Your Honor, a year later, another storm knocked no something storm. on. No well, storm. Where are you guys living? Tornado Valley? The her fence from my tree. So, okay, if we don't have storms, how are all these branches falling? with no storm. There's either a storm happening every day or a man with a chainsaw who doesn't want to hurt people but really has a, like, you know, a hatred of branches that he keeps cutting them every day. Saying there was a storm. There was storms. There's storms all the time in Georgia. You live here. You know this. My clerks have researched this. There were no storms. Oh my God. She did the John Travolta meme. Can we go back for that one? She literally did the John Travolta meme. She went like this. What? This is this show is a meme. Steve, you created a meme show. Please, can we get some memes? Can we get some influences there? Can we please get Austin McBroom and someone else after a, a boxing fight to just argue about who won? Please, Steve. Please, Steve. You gotta help me, Steve. Well, I don't think it happened in September. I think it was October, actually, that it happened. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't remember dates. I'm Asian. I know math. You're Asian. You know oh. math. Anyway. Yeah, that's the that's the look. You Asian, you low math. Steve, even Steve knows when he's gonna get canceled. We we about to be off the air. Okay, Melanie, do you believe this is a healthy tree? I mean, I, I'm not even gonna lie. It has nothing to do with math, knowing what date it is. I've, I've never heard that correlation ever happen. I'm Asian. I know how to tell the date. Well, I'm a calendar. I know exactly the same shit. Yes. I and know it's a healthy tree. I get my trees you. checked every two years. Who's your tree checker, huh? Is it Gareth? What is he checking your trees for? Why is he checking under the leaves for stuff? There's nothing under the leaves except more leaves, you motherfucker. There's n what are you checking the bark for? Why are you opening the bark to suck out the termites with your own mouth? Gareth, you weirdo. Go back home, Gareth. You we don't even pay you to check trees. Stop, stop tree checking. Now you're just a voyeuristic tree checker. Stop. If the tree is in the yard adjacent to your property, on your property line, that is your tree. When these people come out, 
every two years to check the tree. What is a tree checker? I didn't even know that was a real job. Do, are we just making up jobs now? Because I'm going to be a fire hydrant checker. I'm going to start kicking the fire hydrant and if it blows up and water comes out, I'll be like, it's, it's working. So good job on that. I just want to do, I want to be a pastry eating checker. I want to make sure the pastries are edible. So I go into bakeries. I'm like, give me your finest pastry. Oh, Chantal. Oh. Yeah, no, it's, hey man, your pastry is good. That's what I want to do from now on. Steve has opened my eyes and he's also opened my eyes to maybe going bull. I should maybe try it one day. Do you have an estimate? $2,720. You came to court asking for $2,800. Correct. So where's the extra? Okay, so this is now moving from tree into uh, St. Patrick's Day because this is a thought process that we have to follow. Not only is this about a tree, but it's about getting sourced as well. Uh, St. Patrick's Day party. What? Yeah, exactly. What? what? Because my husband's That was Irish. her idea, the party. No, your husband's a fucking wizard from, like, the Hobbiton land or some shit. From the Shire. Y your husband doesn't fucking... Come on, man. Your husband is either Hogwarts or lives in the Shire. This, this is the only two places. Don't tell me that man's Irish. That man doesn't... It could the least looking Irish man since me, okay? If I told you I was Irish, you'd say the same thing. No. No, you're not. You're some variation of brown. Come on. I, this is just how she wiggles her way her back house. in. This is how you wiggle your way out. You keep blaming your husband who hasn't said a word i'm pretty sure he's a dead corpse that you reanimated so can we please not talk about your dead husband let's not talk ill of the people who are possibly irish and dead i decided to throw the party but she was gonna go on it half with the liquor so you got tequila you got rum that total up to 234 dollars i'm sorry is this off to the fences can we not ignore the fact these two have not mended their fences as the lady said and still are like well it's saint patty's day we have to have a party because my wizard husband's irish and by the way the asian lady is so into saint patty's day that it's probably months later she's still wearing green unless she's a boston celtic this is too much I still don't understand why i owe for a party i didn't throw or have anything to do with or drink any of those beverages because i do not no. drink judge there's a picture of her being drunk wait a minute let me put some kush up in it what are you talking about oh, wait a minute Please put the picture. Oh, uh, you see the background? See the background? The left? The 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 girl was mimicking him. He's like, wait a minute. She's in the background. She's like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, he did it. He did it. He did it. Oh now. Hundred percent. This is Jeremy Kyle. This is Jeremy. This is Jerry Springer. This is some kind of weird journalistic reality TV show where they take people and they. Uh, you know, add impressive reactions to them. This was not the reaction you would have in court. You never have people in court going, oh, that's crazy. Steve, you created a whole new genre right here. This is reality court television comedy. This is fantastic. I saw her it. That bottle is not open. I posed for that Where? picture because I saw her laughing at me with her phone like this because she tried. I was like, okay, whatever. Stop. She thinks it. She's laughing at me, so I posed for it. It's a yeah, it's a posed photograph, but I have a better question. Why was you next to the bush? What were you doing there? Huh? Was you you were gonna take a piss, weren't you? You gonna you gonna drop a juice? What were you doing by a bush? Why are you just by a bush by yourself with the with the drink in your hand? If you weren't drinking, why were you holding the drink? Well, nobody just holds. I just don't hold a knife and people are like are you a criminal. No, I just like holding knives. Why are you accusing me of being criminal? I just doing poses like this. Oh, uh, gonna go viral. Probably. <laughs> This case right here has been nothing but mess from the time I started listening to it. Yeah, it has been a mess. And guess what? Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. This is the literal first episode of Steve Harvey Judge Television Show. He started off with a banger. And by banger, I mean I have to bang my head on something to even make sense of it. You know how usually you have a pilot episode in a sitcom and it's supposed to be a strong episode that gets viewers engaged and like, oh, I'd like to see more. It this episode made me want to see less. I stuck around because of Steve Harvey and his fantastical mustache. But if I didn't know Steve Harvey was there, I ain't sticking around. None of it has made sense. And the liquor bill, I'm not making anybody pay half on some liquor. Listen to me. She is responsible for the tree. That's a granite. It's just because she called you Steve, isn't it? You lame bitch. You can't be concise about the storm. If a storm caused it and it was a healthy tree, she can't be held liable. The sad part of this is that you're friends 
Oh yeah, I forgot. This is less about court and more about friendship. Steve Harvey may not actually award anybody any money, but he's gonna award people back their friendships because Steve Harvey is basically giving advice with a gavel. That's what this show should be, advicewithagavel.com. My final verdict is, I'm not awarding anybody anything. That's my final verdict. And that's the way I see it. God damn it, Steve. Why did we even have this show? This is the first episode and you awarded nobody anything. What the fuck were you guys thinking? This is like Dr. Full going like, I need to help you. And by the end of it being like, I can't help you and nobody's getting better. All right, see you tomorrow. What? Nothing was achieved. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. But Steve Harvey, why would you do this? Why would you do this? This is how the show ends. And as I said, if you get to the credits at the very end, it will say that Steve Harvey is not an actual judge and none of his rulings can be used in a court of law all of this is just for entertainment and you guys aren't actually getting awarded anything nobody's winning these cases the only person really winning is steve harvey by even getting these ratings that is the show for you guys is it a good show no is it entertaining hell yes it's one of the funniest shows i've seen because steve harvey and his mustache are doing things that they normally do steve harvey has a very likable affable personality to him there's a reason that so many people hire him to do these jobs that don't require actual thinking because he is not america's philosopher but he is america's common sense dad and the last person who was that was bill cosby so let's just hope that this guy is not like that because he is not the worst thing on television all in all, I think I would give Steve Hobby Judge Show a 3 out of 10. I think that I know that it's trash, but because I like it, it makes me happy. Although I wouldn't recommend it to anyone unless they're in a hospital and cannot change the TV channel. Judge Judy, you better watch your throne because someone else is going to get in those robes if you don't actually start making decisions. Uh, that is all I have for you today. I'm going to rip off my mustache now for your enjoyment. It's going to hurt like shit. You better subscribe because because if you don't, then... Uh, I don't like you. Please. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one. She ain't even got an ass. She did a dash and bit a last. You know a dash and she know. Baby, like to scream and holler.